The thing about lighting, you know, the dances is you, get, you light the airspace and the dancers move through. And suddenly we've got these um, these fluid scenery pieces which are also performing like dancers. And they're moving through this massive amount of airspace. So we're up at six, eight metres of fabric moving in various positions. And so if I get really contained with lighting, you'd see the light rolling on and off the scenery pieces. So I need to really create a soft world that the show can exist in. I've got a very contained a rectangular prism of light that's going quite high in the space to make it all work. Fabric, it's like a dancer. It's rehearsed and it's expected to be there, but it won't always be there. And so you have to allow room for that to smoothly work in the space. We've started using time code, which is a way of locking the cues to an audio track. It allows it to be really precise and you know there's a swell in the music, there's a crescendo, there's an accent. We can actually apply a lighting cue exactly to that moment. But it's a called show, so Simon, the stage manager, is calling the show and he called when the lighting cues go. It just adds a little bit more freedom to the whole thing, so we've sort of softened the acuteness that you can achieve with lighting, which I think actually works very well for the piece. And they're very small steps too, as we go down the chromatic scale of colour. They're like just, you know, a little step, a little step, a little step. You know, we start warm, just get slightly cooler over about six steps. And they, they could have been bigger steps. Um, but the less you change, the more you notice the changes. If you're changing big chromatic steps from purple to red or whatever it is, you know, you're doing, um, you, you've, you don't notice little things, but when you do small steps, you become aware of the small details, which is one of the beauties of this piece.